Okay, good morning everyone. Today we are going to go over topic 9, uh, 9.1, which is transport in the xylem of plants. So our first assessment statement is that transpiration is the inevitable uh, consequence of gas exchange in the leaf. So we know that uh, leaves and plants absorb carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and they release oxygen. So when this happens in the plants, carbon dioxide is absorbed in through the stomata, which are pores on the underside of the leaf, which facilitate gas exchange. So when stomata is open and allow carbon dioxide in, they also allow water vapor to escape. And water vapor is the loss of, it is transpiration. So this is why transpiration is the inevitable consequence of gas exchange in the leaf. So when there is gas exchange, transpiration also happens. Now, guard cells, they minimize the water losses. And they are um, the cells that are found in pairs on either side of the stoma. And the stoma is the singular of stomata. And uh, guard cells control the aperture of stoma and can adjust from wide open to fully closed and this depends on the uh, external factors that affect the transpiration rates and we will get to this. Okay, so the, the, the entire fun like the pathway of water inside a plant could be Concluded in one statement, plants transport water from the roots to the leaves to replace losses from transpiration. So this is an animation showing the meaning of this assessment. So the blue thing here is the water from the roots to the leaves, uptake of water and minerals in the roots going through the xylem and it evaporates via st the stomata in the leaves. Okay, so this is exactly what we just said, but how does the water go up this way even though this is against the rules of gravity? This is because of three reasons. The pull of transpiration and adhesion and cohesion. So the water flows from the soil to the roots due to osmosis. Now we know osmosis happens when there is a concentration gradient. And yes, there is a concentration gradient in the roots because there is an active transport of minerals in the roots. So the roots have much more solute than, um, the root side has much more solute than the roots. So water flows in to try to balance this concentration and when it does flow in, it's pulled up in the xylem. So once the water is in the root, it travels up the xylem through the cell walls and the cytoplasm. The cell wall is the apoplast way, and the cytoplasm is the symplast way. Now, it, it basically means the, that the um, water is going through the cell wall, and in the cytoplasm, it's just going through the cytoplasm. That's all there is to it. And an easy way to remember it is that symplast sounds more like cytoplasm. Okay, now we are going to speak in detail about each one of these uh, little factors. First, the cohesive property of water. So from previous topics in the IB course, we know that water is polar and cohesion is when there are hydrogen bonds between the water molecules inside water, which makes water stick together. Okay, um, the assessment statement tells us that we need to describe the structure of the xylem. So the xylem is basically made out of long continuous tubes, uh, and it's formed from files of cells arranged end to end. This, you can also find it in your um, book, it's not a very important part, you just need to know that it's a long continuous vessel arranged and formed from files of cells arranged end to end. 
Okay. Now, we need to know how the xylem is able to maintain its strength even under low pressure. Firstly, how is low pressure caused? When the water evaporates from the leaves right here, inside the xylem, there is less pressure because there is no water. There is little water compared to that in the leaves. So, how is it still able to stay standing, even though there is low pressure? This is because the xylem wall is very strong. Um, there, its wall is thickened, and the thickenings are impregnate, impregnated with a polymer called lignin. This threatens the wall so that they can withstand very low pressures without collapsing. And uh, we said that cohesion happens because of the polarity of water. Uh, oxygen has a partially negative charge and hydrogen has a partially positive charge, so they form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. Now the adhesive property of water uh, is also one of the things, as we said, that helps the water in the xylem to climb up the stem. So, uh, explain the decrease in pressure and transpiration pull that results from evaporation of water from the leaf. So, again, going back to our animation, when water comes out of the leaf through the stoma, it's pulling the water from down. So, this is called a transpiration pull. When water leaves the leaf, when water leaves the leaves, the leaves, <laughs> um, it, it brings on all the other water molecules. And why? Because of adhesion and cohesion. So the water molecules are attached to each other. So if one molecule goes up, the rest will follow. So uh, we said why there's a decrease in pressure, and we said what is the transpiration pull. And we also need to know that transpiration is a passive process. It doesn't require energy. It just happens. It's a natural process. And we said um, adhesive properties helps the water climb up. Uh, adhesion is now when the water molecules form hydrogen, pond, uh, hydrogen bonds with other uh, polar molecules. So here the water is forming a hydrogen bond with the xylem uh, stem or the vessel. Okay. Uh, active uptake of mineral ions and the roots causes absorption of water by osmosis. So we said that the water goes into the root by osmosis because there's an active transport of mineral ions in the root. Okay, um, this requires another video that I'm going to make about it, uh, saying the three ways that minerals flow into the root cells. But for now, we need to know that roots are hypertonic, which means they have a higher solute concentration relative to the soil. So the solute concentration in cells is greater than in the soil because, that's, because of the mineral ions flowing inside the root. Um, active transport helps maintain the uh, hypertonic solution because energy is used to actively transport mineral ions in, inside the roots. To the roots. So yeah, this assessment statement is what my next video will be about. And we said that the symplastic goes through the cytoplasm and the aplastic pathway goes through the cell wall. Uh, which one do you think is faster? The apoplastic pathway is definitely faster because in the cytoplasm you are encountering all these organelles like um, chloroplasts and ribosomes, so it's definitely faster through the cell walls. Okay, now that we are done with the main assessment statements, we can go to the adaptations of plants that um, in deserts and saline so uh, soils for water conservation. So, 
these adaptations that we are going to talk about exist for um, xerophytes. And xerophytes are plants that are adapted to growing in deserts and dry habitats. So, um, these are the main ones. There are a few other uh, minor points, but we will speak about the three R's first. So, reduced leaves. Um, so, if you have less leaves, that means you automatically have less transpiration because water leaves the plant through the leaves. An example for this is conifers and cactus plants. They have reduced leaves and they have needles and spines. So, the second thing is rolled leaves. So, we said uh, in the definition of stoma, they are pores that exist in the underside of leaves. So when the leaf is rolled, the holes are inside, like inside a lumen. So this creates humidity within the rolled leaf. So when water vapor comes to leave, it sees that its path is blocked by the extension of the rolled leaf. And when the next water vapor tries to exit the uh, plant's leaf, it sees that there is already water there because of humidity and this decreases the leaves exposure to air currents that take water vapor and would decrease the loss of water through the transpiration. So here we mentioned humidity and air currents. These are two things that affect the transpiration rates and we're going to talk about them later. So the reduced number of stoma, like uh, leaves, if you have less stomata, you're going to have less transpiration automatically. So by reducing the number of stomata, water loss through the transpiration is decreased because there are fewer holes for evaporation to take place. Now we have the thickened waxy cuticle. Okay, so every leaf has a layer of waxy cuticle on top. This minimizes the loss of water. So some leaves have an extra thick layer and um, in some cases it becomes waterproof and impermeable to water. This definitely prevents water loss through the epidermal cells. The epidermal cells are the cells on the surface of a leaf, whether top or bottom. Now, uh, Stomata in pits surrounded by hair. So stomata sunken in pits in the presence of air creates humidity again by trapping moist air close to the leaf. And when there's a sunken stomata, it's like in, in a little hole where there is more humidity in that area. It would decrease its exposure to air currents once again. And the hair reduces airflow around the stomata. So that's why you can compare it to... Um, a place that has a lot of trees is not as windy as a place as, as a desert, for example, at night. Uh, this is because the hair or the trees, in, in their analogy, they reduce the airflow. So the stomata in pits and the presence of hair reduce the water loss from the plant. Um, you will not really have to explain uh, every single adaptation you just need to state it so reduced leaves decreases surface area for transpiration causing water loss thickened waxy cuticle uh, makes the leaf waterproof and impermeable to water preventing water loss so you definitely don't have to go into details and even the ivy biology book just has the words mentioned with absolutely no explanation okay Now we're going to the factors affecting the transpiration rates of plants. So when there's a lot of light, the light intensity causes the rate of transpiration to increase as the stomata open. So when there's a lot of sun and it's very hot outside, uh, the, you sweat more. So this could be an analogy to light. So the light intensity causes the rate of trans transpiration to increase because it opens the stomata. Temperature, again, like the sun analogy, if it's hot, evaporation also increases, 
because water as we know is very good coolant and it takes with it heat wind if there's no wind the air surrounding a leaf becomes humid thus reducing the rate of transpiration so high wind equals high transpiration so when, when wind is present humid air is carried away thus increasing the rate of transpiration so this is air currents and humidity and as we've just seen in adaptations they're extremely linked together Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. So if there's already water vapor out, water doesn't need to leave. Because as we know, the rule of osmosis, water leaves to go to a area of low water concentration. So there's high water concentration outside the cell, outside the, the, yeah, the epidermal cell or the stomata of the leaf. Um, if there's already water there, so the transpiration does not have to happen. So the lower the humidity is outside the cell, the greater the rate of diffusion of water. From So in, in simple words, high humidity causes low transpiration. High wind causes high transpiration. High temperature and high light both cause high transpiration. And that is it for 9.1.